Former President Donald Trump has been psychoposting on the main. So over the course of last night and this morning, he made more than 60 posts on Truth Social. Not all of them were unique posts. Some of them were retweets or retruths, whatever he's calling it. Um, and most of them were innocuous right-wing memes or graphics saying that they support Donald Trump. Uh, but some of these posts were absolutely disturbing and deranged, and they require our attention simply because this isn't just a former president, but this is the front runner for the Republican Party for the 2024 presidential election. Somebody who's saying these things, I don't want them anywhere near power. And, and like this is comparing him to 2016. The things that he said in 2016 were absolutely disturbing, but it's getting worse and a lot more authoritarian. But first, I want to share something that I think is actually humorous and probably my favorite post from him. He simply asks, why are people so mean? You have an old man <laughs> who's probably the biggest asshole in America asking this question, why are people so mean? Why are you so mean? Maybe ask yourself that question, Donald Trump, like he's going full emo on Truth Social, and I can't diagnose him over the internet, but having experience with people in my life who have issues with, you know, um, manic depressive disorder or bipolar, it, it seems like he's going through a manic episode of some sorts. Maybe that's not it. Perhaps he's just stressed out over the Mar-a-Lago raid. Either way, he's certainly going through something, and this behavior is really worrying for somebody who could assume a lot of power in the United States. So as you'll remember, on Monday he tweeted or truthed. So now it comes out conclusively that the FBI buried the Hunter Biden laptop sorry before the election, knowing that if they didn't, Trump would have easily won the 2020 presidential election. Oh, sure. Uh, this massive fraud and election interference at a level never seen before in our country remedy, declare the rightful winner or... And this would be the minimal solution, declare the 2020 election irreparably compromised and have a new election immediately. Now, the following day, he doubled down, saying the presidential election was badly and irreparably tainted by the FBI's fake description of the laptop from hell to Facebook and the lamestream media. And for many other reasons as well, declare the rightful winner or hold new election now. Now, I'm not going to read all of that because he's just rambling at this point. But we have a former president and potentially future president demanding that he be reinstated. Just give him the presidency now. I mean, you could joke about this because he's very clearly throwing a tantrum, but he's demanding that he be reinstated as the president of the United States. And he's saying this seriously. Like, Does anybody think that he's being facetious here? No, he's absolutely dead serious about this. Either reinstate me or hold election now. Rehold the election that was held a couple of years ago where he lost. This is absolutely horrifying because he's telling you he wants to be a dictator. He's not saying that explicitly, but this is what he wants. He wants absolute power and he will take that power even if it means completely destroying democracy. That is absolutely horrifying. And sure, we can make fun of Donald Trump for posting so much, whatever, but things like this, they stand out because it's not just him screaming this into the void. This resonates with his supporters who still believe that the election was stolen from him. And it's not the only horrible thing that he did over the course of, of his uh, truth social posting spree. So as Politico's Kyle Cheney points out, Trump is spending his morning on truth social directly posting 4chan and Q messages a day after calling to be reinstated as president. He's doing explicitly what he used to try to shade or used coded language for. For good measure, he's also promoting a nonsense idea that the FBI and Antifa, not his supporters, stormed the Capitol on January 6th and a completely false claim about Ray Epps' wife and promoting anti-vaccine messaging that includes an obviously fake quote attributed to his daughter, Ivanka Trump. So there's just so much to unpack here. First of all, Trump has never been explicitly anti-vax with respect to the COVID vaccines. I mean, prior to the COVID vaccines, we all know that he did share anti-vaccine rhetoric. But still, when it comes to COVID vaccines, he's been pretty pro-COVID vaccines simply because he's the one who created Operation Warp Speed. Therefore, he wants credit for it. And, you know, he should want to take credit for this because the vaccines have saved millions of lives. But now he's sharing what I think everyone can see is a fake tweet from his own daughter. What? Why are you sharing 
fake tweets from your own daughter. We can see, like, I'm not related to Ivanka Trump, but I can see that's clearly not the way that she would speak. It's fake. But he's sharing it. And now, if you'll remember, QAnon, they believed that Trump would be reinstated. They kept moving the goalpost. Okay, you know, he's not president now. He's going to arrest everyone on Joe Biden's inauguration day. That never happened. Then the date was, I think, um, August or September of 2021. Then it was November, then December. So they kept, you know, moving the goalpost. But consistently, a lot of QAnon followers believe that Trump was going to be reinstated. And now he's saying, no, I want to be reinstated. So he's sharing actual QAnon posts. And now he's signal boosting, you know, them and saying, yeah, I, I want to be reinstated, making them believe that, oh, maybe his reinstatement is inevitable since he's now calling for it. And the effect that this has had on QAnon has, of course, been that they've been emboldened. As NBC News' Ben Collins explains, QAnon forums are obviously ecstatic and bloodthirsty after Trump's Q-endorsing tweet storm this morning. They had been relatively dead in the last few months, with users headed over to general Trump forums and militia slash Q-influencer telegrams. Not anymore. Now, QAnon is now a movement that is multidimensional, but for the most part, most of them believe that Trump was cheated and they believe that Trump is going to be reinstated at some point, or at a minimum, he should be reinstated. And now, you know, he's sharing them, sharing posts about Q from 4chan screenshots. I don't know if he knows what he's doing, but I suspect that he's probably familiar with the, you know, uh, forums that are propping him up. And now they're emboldened. Again, I just want to remind you, this is the front runner for the 2024 GOP primary. Now, uh, just some additional things that I want to point out. We're not going to dive into these here, but Truth Social was actually blocked by the Google Play Store because they're citing threats of harassment, threats of violence, and unless they moderate that content, well, they can't allow Truth Social to be on the App Store because that violates their policies. Now, on top of that, this headline is just very on brand for Donald Trump. Trump never pays his bills. Truth Social reportedly stiffs contractor amid financial disarray. Trump's Twitter knockoff is already in a bitter battle with its web host over $1.6 million in unpaid bills. So that's the least surprising thing ever, but Trump is very clearly unhinged. And this isn't, it's not like he's never a normal functioning adult, if you know what I mean, but there are these periods where he does these tweet storms or truth storms. It's such a stupid fucking name. But where he does this, and, and you could just tell he's not in a normal state of mind. I mean, his normal state of mind, his default state of mind is brain worms. But, like, this is very clearly different. And, again, this is the man who wants the nuclear button. Once again, it's just... It's genuinely disturbing, and the GOP, they're really not sending their best, because not only is Trump the front runner, but according to a new Emerson College poll, well, uh, Herschel Walker, somebody who very clearly is mentally incapacitated and should not be in a position of power and influence, is now leading in the Georgia Senate race against Raphael Warnock. So, folks, it kind of feels like we're fucked, but I'm not going to lose hope right now, but it just feels like, man, this is who the GOP base is is opting for it. These are the types of people who they support. Herschel Walker, a violent person who shouldn't, like his family needs to intervene. I'll just say that. Like, I don't want to criticize him too much because it feels like almost gross and ableist, but I mean, he wants to be in a position of power. He can't do, like he cannot do that. He's not fit to serve. And yet the GOP keeps picking people who are mentally unfit to serve. Like these people need help not power. And that's where we're at, where Trump could be the GOP frontrunner. So like, look, I've gone back and forth between Trump and DeSantis in terms of who's more damaging. And I think that DeSantis could be more effective at implementing his fascistic agenda and convincing normies that what is fascism very clearly is innocuous. But over the course of the last couple of months, it's become more clear that even as damaging as DeSantis is, Trump is just more unhinged, more unfit to serve more damaging. So, uh, I mean, 
what do you even say at, at this point in time? I, I don't I don't know what to what to say. What do we, what do we do? We just have to cross our fingers and hope that the GOP psychopathic base doesn't opt for this fucking lunatic in 2024. That's where we're at in American democracy. We're hoping that deranged people who are constantly bombarded by right wing misinformation are going to make the correct decision and opt for somebody slightly less fucking insane than Donald Trump. That's where we're at, really. It's just it, these things kind of make me feel doomer pilled. So that's why I don't want to dwell on it. But overall, this is maybe the next president of the United States, folks. Just bear that in mind. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.